Hello guys, today I'm going to solve uh, May June 2019 past papers, physics past papers. It's a 4 1 variant. And let's see, before starting to the questions, I want to give you let's read the instructions first. And you should be careful, take the weight of 1 kilogram to be 10 Newton, and the acceleration of free fall is 10 meter per second squared. As an important thing you should uh, keep it in your mind while you are solving the questions and the question one a rocket is stationary on the launch pad at time t is equal to zero the rocket engines are switched on exhaust gases are ejected from the nozzles of the engine and the rocket accelerates upwards so this is the acceleration time time graph is given in the question so the first one is define acceleration. As, as you know, uh, when we define the acceleration, acceleration is the change of velocity per unit time. And on the question B, it's asking sketch a graph to show how the speed of the rocket varies between the time 0 to Tf. So when we have the acceleration graph, we have the acceleration graph uh, from 0 to t final. So when we observe the graph, the acceleration is increasing with the constant gradient up to a certain point. So which means in this both case, the acceleration increases and the acceleration is increasing, the speed also increases. So the graph is going to be a curved graph. And as you see, this gradient is increasing and it shows that also the acceleration also increasing and the second part is this after that the acceleration is a constant so constant acceleration means the the rocket continues with the straight line graph so this is the graph uh, when we convert the acceleration time graph to the speed time graph we can find we can able to draw this kind of graph, a curve, which is the speed increases with the acceleration increasing. And it's a straight line graph, the speed increasing with constant acceleration. So for the C, some time later, the rocket is a far from the Earth. The effect of the Earth's gravity on the motion of the rocket is insignificant. As the rocket accelerates, its momentum increases. So what is the principle of conservation of momentum? So the principle of uh, conservation of momentum is this. If there is no external force which is affecting in the system, the total momentum will remain constant. So if there is no external forces in the system, so the momentum will remain constant. And to explain how the principles of the conservation of momentum applies to the accelerating rocket and exhausted exhaust gas. So when we look at here, uh, an object is moving upwards and also there is a, a gas which is in the opposite direction of the movement of the rocket. So accelerating rocket means the speed of rocket increases with the time. So the rocket as the speed increases, the rocket gains momentum. And therefore, as you know, if there is no any external forces which is acting on the system, what will happen? The, ex the momentum is increasing in the one direction and also the, in the opposite direction in the same amount, the momentum is going to increase. So the rocket gains momentum, therefore the exhaust gas also again the same amount of momentum in opposite direction let's look at in the question two it's a moment question it's a there is a sign board which is fixed with the uh, with the post so calculate the weight w of the sign so how to calculate the weight? Weight is equal to mass times gravity. So, which is equal to the weight we already know, 3.4 times 10 to the power 3 kilogram. The gravity we already know from the instructions, which is 10. So it's going to be 3.4 times 10 to the power 4 
Newton, it could be the weight of the sign. So the weight of the sign acts at a horizontal distance of 1.8 meter from the center of the support post and produces a turning effect about point P. The point P is a horizontal distance of 1.3 meter from the center of the support post. Calculate the moment about P due to weight of the sign. So when we look at here, when we look at here, this is the weight, this is the weight, and this point from weight to the turning effect, this is 1.8 from weight to the post, and from turning point P to the post is 1.3 meter, so this part is going to be 1.8 minus 1.3 is going to be 0 0.5 meter. So we know that moment is equal to force times perpendicular distance. Force times perpendicular distance. So the force here is the weight of the sign and the distance between the weight of sign to the turning point. So it's going to be weight times distance. 0 0.5 is the distance times the weight we already find out 3.4 times 10 to the power 4 which is equal to 1.7 times 10 to the power 4 newton meter is the momentum about the p point so oh, let's continue with the two a concrete block is positioned on the other side of the support post with its center mass a horizontal distance of 70 centimeter from the center of the support post state what is the mean by center of mass center of mass is the point where all the mass can be concentrated considered to be concentrated generally it's in the middle of the object or where the mass is concentrated we call it center of mass the question to the weight of concrete block produces a moment about p that exactly cancels the moment caused by the weight of b so what is the mean of cancel if the weight of concrete block produces a moment about point p which is exactly cancel the weight w which means this system is in equilibrium so clockwise moment is equal to anti-clockwise moment so we already find out one direction of moment which is the moment caused by the weight w which is 1.7 times 10 to the power 4 which is equal to so we have to know which one is clockwise direction which one is anti-clockwise direction so when we look at here when we look at here the momentum 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 for the weight is anti is a clockwise direction it's clockwise direction so it's clockwise direction so when we look at the concrete block it's rotate to anti-clockwise direction so when we look at here the momentum clockwise is 1.7 times 10 to the power 4 which is equal to the concrete weight which is the force times the distance so when we look at the concrete block from the middle of the center of mass of the concrete block to the turning point p it's 1.3 meter plus 70 centimeter when we convert the 70 centimeter to 100 is going to be 0 0.7 meters so we are going to add it so it's going to be the weight concrete times 1.3 plus 0 0.70 is will be 2 meter away from the turning point so the concrete weight is going to be 8.5 times 10 to the 10 to the power 3 Newton. So when the concrete block is removed, the sign and support post rotate about the point P in a clockwise direction. State and explain what happens to the moment about P due to weight of the sign as it rotates. 
So as you see here, the weight of concrete block, it cancel the weight of V, the moment caused by the weight of sine. So when you remove the concrete block, the system is not at equilibrium at all, so that the moment of system and perpendicular distance between P and line of action of weight of sign will increase. So the system is not at equilibrium and the moment, moment is going to increase as the distance will increase as well. And the question three, it's about the pressure. So a cube of sign 0.040 meters floating in a container of, of liquid. So you can, see, you can see here the figure 3.1. There is a cube which is on, uh, on the water and there is a pump and valve. You can see on the figure 3.1. So, explain in terms of air molecules how the force due to pressure of air is produced. So, when we look at here, the air is above the water and is above the cube also. So what is going to happen here? So here there are air molecules. So the air molecules, they're going to collide each other. Air molecules collide always each other and they're going to collide also with the cube walls. So the air molecules, due to the collision of walls and each other, they are going to exert force on the walls. So when they are going to exert force on the walls, of course, uh, what will happen? The impulse also exerted and they're going to exert a pressure on the water and on the cube. So the density of the liquid in the container is 1,500 kilogram per meter cube. Calculate the pressure due to liquid at the depth of 0 0.028 meter. Pressure liquid is equal to depth times density times gravity. We know the depth is already given 0 0.28 meters. 0 0.28 meters. And we know the density of 1,500 kg per meter cube. So we know the gravity which is 10. And as you see the units are on the same kind of uh, like they are all meters so it's going to be 420 pascal is the pressure so the force on the bottom face of the cube is caused by the pressure due to liquid so force is equal to pressure times area we know the pressure due to liquid at the depth is 420 pascal so it's going to be 420 times the area of the cube this uh, one side is 0 0.040 meters, so area of the cube is going to be a squared. So it's going to be 0 0.040 squared, so the force is going to be 0 0.672 after the calculation. So the when the valve is open and liquid is pumped into container, the surface of the liquid raises a distance of 0 0.034 meters. The cube remains floating in the liquid with the bottom of 0 0.028 meter below the surface of the liquid. Calculate the work done on the cube by the force. So work done is equal to force times distance. So the force is already, we already calculate because the cube, phase of the cube caused by the pressure due to liquid is 0. 672 times the raising liquid distance is 0 0.034 meter and the work done is going to be 0 0.023 joule energy. Suggest one reason why this is not an efficient method of lifting up the cube because while you are, while you are lifting the cube you can also lift the liquid this is the one of the reason and the another reason there could be a friction between liquid and container for question four it's a uh, gas of mass 0.23 gram is trapped in a cylinder by piston 
The gas is at atmospheric pressure, which is one times 10 to the power of 5 Pascal. And there is a piston uh, positioned by a catch. So the volume of trapped gas is 1.9 times 10 to the power negative 4 meter cube. And the electrical heater is used to increase the temperature of the trapped gas by 550 degrees Celsius. Calculate the energy required to increase the temperature by 550 degrees Celsius. So energy is equal to mass times specific heat capacity times temperature, which is equal to So, uh, so from here the mass is 0 0.23 times, so 0 0.23 gram, and the specific heat capacity is 0 0.72 joule per gram degree Celsius, and the temperature is 550 degrees Celsius. As you see in these questions, we have not converted any volume. So the reason behind it is the gas of mass is 0 0.23 gram when we look at the specific heat capacity is gram the temperature degree celsius and the temperature of trapped gas also is degree celsius so we don't need to do the conversion of the unit so we just multiply 550 times 0 0.72 times 0 0.23 is going to give us the energy 91 joule so this is the energy is required to increase the temperature of the gas. So the power of the heat is 2.4 watts. Calculate how long it takes for the heater to supply the energy calculated in AI. So energy is equal to power times time. This is the formula. And time is equal to energy over power. And we know the energy is 91 joule over 2.4 watt, which is equal to 38 seconds. In practice, it takes much longer to increase the temperature of gas by 550 degrees Celsius using the heater. So I just want the reason because in the practical life, the thermal energy is used to increase the temperature of surroundings as well. So you need to use much isolated, uh, you have to increase the isolations and to reduce the heat loss. When the temperature of the gas has increased by 550 degrees Celsius, its pressure is 2.9 times 10 to the power of 5 Pascals. The catch is then released allowing the piston to move as the piston moves, the temperature of the gas remain constant. So when we look at here, the gas, the temperature gas remain constant. So if the temperature remain constant, when the pressure, when the volume increases, the pressure is going to decrease. So what will happen? State and explain what happens to the piston. Of course, from this case, from this case, the piston is going to move to this side. The piston is going to move to this side. Why? Because the piston, the, the, the piston is going to move to this side. And the, here there is atmospheric pressure and here there is a gas pressure. So it's going to be balanced. When it is balanced, when it is balanced, the piston is going to stop to move. So what is going to happen? The piston moves to the right side due to pressure of gas greater than on left side. So when the piston moves to this side, which means it's going to be balanced with atmospheric pressure. So it's increasing the volume to reduce the gas pressure here because the catch is not has already removed and the piston can move from left to the right side. So when you remove the catch, the pressure gas is going to push the piston through the right side and to make equal the both cases, both sides. So determine the volume of gas when the piston stops moving. 
So with the with this equation of Boyce law, pressure one times volume one is equal to pressure two times volume two. So volume two is equal to 2.9 times 10 to the power of 5 is the pressure 1 times 1.9 times 10 to the power of negative 4 is the volume over 1 times 10 to the power of 5 is the this is the final pressure which is the atmospheric pressure so it's going to equal to the volume the final volume is going to be 5.5 times 10 to the power of negative 4 meter cube so the liquids and gases are two states of matter in question five in both boiling and evaporation a liquid changes into a gas there are two ways in which boiling differs from evaporation so guys here there is two differences boiling occurs throughout the liquid and boiling does not produce a cooling effect because evaporation can happen at any temperature and evaporation has a cooling effect so boiling has a differences before injecting a patient a doctor wipes a small amount of volatile liquid on the patient's skin explain in terms of molecules how this procedure cools the patient's skin so <clears throat> this is the evaporation actually we have to explain here the evaporation what was the evaporation explanation the more energetic molecules which are near to the surface of the liquid they escapes from the liquid and the less energetical molecules remain behind in the liquid so the temperature of liquid decreases and energy lost by body so when you drop the liquid into your body, what will happen? The, when the thermal energy is taken by the is taken by the liquid from the body, and the more energetic particles are going to escape to the to the air. So the remain ones, the remain ones will decrease the temperature of the liquid. So the energy is going to be loose by your body so this is the, the explanation of the question so the gases can be compressed but liquids are incompressible explain in terms of molecules why liquids are incompressible because uh, liquids they have large intermolecular forces compared to the gases and uh, the space between liquid particles compared to the gases it's much closer to each other so it, they don't allow to be compressible for question six and green light of frequency 5.7 times 10 to the power 14 hertz is traveling in air at a speed of 3 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second the light is incident on the surface of a transparent solid the figure 6.1 shows the wavefronts from air to solid. So the light travels more slowly in the transparent solid. More slowly in the transparent solid. So explain in terms of wavefronts why the light changes direction as it enters the solid. You may draw on figure 6.1 as a part of your answer. So when we look at here the wave it's coming it's coming as an incident ray to the solid boundary air solid boundary and when you look at here the one side of the wave one side of the wave enters to the solid region first and the other part is delayed it's entered later so that when it is moving to the solid it is bending okay and the speed also is changing and the direction also is changing which the angle also is changing so one side enters to the re solid region first and the other one is delayed so just change the direction and which is bending into the solid so the refractive let's see the question b the light incident on the surface of the solid at an angle of incident is 67 degrees Celsius. Calculate the angle of refraction of the light in the solid. 
we already know the refractive index of the transparent solid is 1.3 so n is equal to sine i over sine r i means the angle of incidence r means the angle of refraction so we know the refractive index is 1.3 which is equal to sine 67 over sine angle of refraction so the angle of refraction is going to be 45 degree celsius determine determine the wavelength of the grain lights in the transparent solid so here to to find out the wavelength we need two things to find one is the velocity or the speed of transparent solid and then we will look at if we have uh, we already have uh, the frequency so we can able to find out the wavelength so how to find out the speed the, the the green light speed in the transparent solid which is equal to the speed of light over refractive index we know the speed of light is already given us 3 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second and we also have the frequency here so uh, over 1.3 is going to be the velocity 2.3 times 10 to the power 8 you can check your questions always when you find out you see the the, the green light when it is enters to the solid is going to be slower so the, the speed of the weight also is going to reduce so it's already reduced which is correct so wavelength is equal to the speed of green light over frequency so when we do that 2.3 times 10 to the power 8 over frequency is 5.7 times 10 to the power 14 which is already given in the question and the answer is the wavelength is 4.0 times 10 to the power negative 7 meters so let's look at the question 7 in the figure 7.1 shows a circuit diagram that includes a component x so state the name of component x as you know this symbol is belongs to thermistor it's a thermistor these are the normal resistors but this is a thermistor and this one is a meter and this is a battery so the electromotive force emf of the battery is e so it's supporting here e and the potential differences between <coughs> the potential differences across the 30 ohm resistor is a V30 so this is a E this is E and PD the potential difference across the component X is VX so what is the relationship between the 30 ohm and x so 30 ohm and x they are parallel to each other so when they are parallel to each other they are going to sh they are going to get the full amount of potential differences so vx and v30 ohms they are going to be equal so vx is equal to v30 so when we look at here e and v20 and vx what is the equation between what is the relationship between Vx, E and V20? So V20 and Vx, they are series to each other. So they are going to get shared the potential differences. So we are going to say Vx is equal to EMF, total EMF minus V20 is going to give us the relationship. The EMF of the battery is 6 volts and the resistance of the component X is 15 ohms. Calculate the total resistance of the circuit. So, <clears throat> first of all, we have here, we have a parallel, the thermistor and 30 ohms. And we have a series to these two parallel resistors. So, first of all, we have to find out the equivalent resistance of X and 30 ohms. And after that, we are going to add the 20 ohms so as we see here the parallel resistors totally are 1 times r2 over r1 plus r2 so why we use this formula this formula is the easy ways is the easy way because 
uh, there are two parallel resistors, so we use this one. So R parallel is 10 ohms. So this total resistance of 10 ohms, the parallel resistance, plus 20 is going to give us the total resistance, which is 30 ohms. And after that is asking the ammeter reading. So when we look at the ammeter is in the main connection, is connected in the main circuit. So uh, um, we can find it, um, uh, current is equal to voltage over resistance. So the voltage is six over the total resistance, which is 30 ohms is going to be 0 0.20 amps because the battery of EMF is six volts and the temperature of component x increases state and explain what happens to the ammeter reading so when the temperature of the component x increases the resistance of the thermistor is going to decrease so which means the total resistance when we look at here the total resistance is going to reduce so when the total resistance is going to reduce what happened the current or the ammeter reading is going to increase. Let's look at the question 8. A student turns the handle of alternating current generator and the coil rotates. So the figure 8.1 represents the structure of the AC generator. So this is the structure of AC generator. And there is an alternating voltage output between two terminals. Explain why rotating the coil produces an output voltage. Because when the coil rotates into a magnetic field, this, mag this, coil, this coil is going to cut the magnetic field lines. So therefore, the EMF induced. So this is the easy explanation of the question. State the position of rotating coil when the alternating output voltage is at maximum value and explain why the maximum output occurs at this position. When the coil is horizontal, the coil cuts the magnetic field line the fastest. It's going to cut much more magnetic field lines when the coil is horizontal. A lamp and an open switch are connected in a series to the output terminals of the AC generator. The switch is closed and the lamp lights up. The student has to apply a greater force on the handle. Explain why the greater force is needed to keep the lamp lit. Because energy is given out or energy lost from lamp, so the student must rotate faster the handle to cut much more magnetic field lines and to increase the induced EMF. So energy lost from lamp, so students must do more work or must rotate faster because the greater force to do more work. Remember, work done is equal to force times distance. So when you apply, the distance is the same because the circumference of the rotation is not changing, but applying force must be increased. For question 9, the figure 9.1 shows a beam of alpha particles moving towards a thin sheet of gold in a vacuum. And the detector in the region surrounding the thin gold sheet detect the alpha particles and determine the number of particles that travel in various directions. State and explain what can be deduced from the following observations. So from here, the alpha particles, we, this experiment we can remember for, from our textbooks. When the alpha particles are moving from the source to the gold sheets. Some of them they can just pass direct. Some of them they are going to reflect back. Some of them they are going to deflect. So there will be uh, in different kinds of actions. So the majority of the alpha particles pass through the gold sheet undeflected and are detected on the far side. 
So what is the deduction here? The most probably the alpha particles cannot see any can they don't hit with the nucleus and the deduction it could be the gold sheet of nucleus is very small. And the explanation a few alpha particles hit the nucleus, but the most of them pass nearby the nucleus and they just move straight forward to the detector. A small number of alpha particles are deflected as they pass through the gold sheet. So if there is a deflection, most probably the nucleus is charged. So the, with the charged alpha particles, they are going to experience a repulsion force, which they be a deflection will occur. A very small number of alpha particles are deflected through very large angles or return back the way they come. So the deduction alpha particles heat to the nucleus or heat to the center of the gold sheet and the explanation alpha particles move but nucleus will stay in the same place. So a beam that consists of both alpha particles and beta particles is passed through a region of space where there is a magnetic field perpendicular to the direction of the beam state two ways in which the deflection of the particle alpha particles differ from the that of beta particles of course alpha particle and beta particles they are going to they are, they are always charging differently but the beta particles charge negatively alpha particles charge positively so of course the deflection the direction will be different the deflection direction will be different and the deflection deflection will be smaller because alpha particles is a uh, compared to the beta particle is a heavier particle so the deflection will be smaller so we have done the past paper thank you very much for your listening and watching us thank